You talk about Nelson too, and we're saying others. We've heard a lot of version as to what happened. I want you to please share your own perspective with us as to what happened, what we've heard, how they were executed, why they were executed. If you have any idea. Well, first of all, Wesse was one of those decisive guys who really helped to influence the course of the coup. I don't know the details. But when what I know was the man that the man who introduced me to Moja and the All People's Freedom Alliance. Marcus Bobe was special assistant in Wesson's office. And you will remember at the time, the PRC tried to arrest Dew Mason. Uh, Marcus Bobe had a strong influence on Wesson's politics. Because Wesson, like Dew, probably had not grown up politically sufficiently. So they listened to the advice of people they trusted. When we said was arrested, I think Doe traveled and left we said in jail. I think we said was arrested on the PRC. We said release we said. Nelson told the five PRC members that were killed, took side with Wesson. Wesson was one of those guys who went to Sino and brought down the monument that commemorated, I think, the coming of the pioneers or something. He was uh, very anti-American Liberian in his stance. And that is also, if you check Western's background, he come from the portion of that Sapo tribe that was probably maltreated in Greenville, in Sino. We know, for example, that when the district commissioners and big shots are traveling in our area in my own lifetime, they were carrying them on in a hammer. And one of them was called Nathaniel Duncan. I'm sure some of you will know Duncan. Duncan was married to a Sapo woman. But every time the Sapo people were carrying Duncan on their head, when Duncan wanted to use the bathroom, he will urinate, staying right on their head, and the urine will be flashing on them while they are holding him. That thing made a soul in the hearts of the Sapo people. And anybody, what I learned about my people, the Sapo people are very difficult to forgive. They don't easily forgive. What they do is that they easily forget. But they don't forgive. So if you are going to do something, the Sapo, the Sapo people have fought all the other tribes around them until they had to sign a pact or deal with the crowns and the bastards. That we are related, we are siblings. We are not supposed to see each other blood. In the olden days, a Basa woman was not supposed to get married to a Sapo man. Because when she goes to give birth, you know, she will waste blood. Therefore, you don't need to waste the blood of your Dodi. Dodi means from inside the mother. We are from the same womb. That's what Dodi means. You know, so. Wesson and others have had their own grievances, age-old grievances against the Americans. And probably that impacted on his action. Personally, when he bulldozed the monument in China. But 
the Western had the same political experience and probably maturity like I have now. I would think that our diversity, our ethnic diversity, should be the source of our strength. It was the quest for freedom for our people who were in slavery in America that led to the coming of the pioneers to seek a place on this continent where they were established what Marcus Garvey called the first light in the darkness. At the time of the formation of Liberia, that formation was revolutionary and heroic. And those men who had an idea to, to establish the Liberian nation state, they did a great favor not only to, to the Liberians, to Africa, but to all black people. Because aside from Ethiopia, Liberia became the first African Republic. And we became the trailblazer. And the independence of the rest of Africa was fought for by us in our own weak way. So people who do not have a sense of history will go bulldozing, you know. Um, the fact that we are different tribes and different ethnic groups, we should celebrate our diversity. I believe that. And therefore, such were the times. You know, Wesson did what he had to do within the scope of his own understanding. But if a nation of people that fail to educate its own people and ignorance, poverty became tools for oppression. Sometimes, historically, the poverty you live with your people can boomerang on you and express itself in a dangerous form. And I think that's what happened with the case of the PRC. The PRC didn't know any better. If they were educated sufficiently and trained to respect law and order, if those that they emulated as leaders were respecting human rights, probably they would have thought twice, but they were consumed by the hatred of the Americans, which was logical from the age old conflict that we had. And therefore, this conflict, for it to be resolved, a lot of mishaps are going to take place.